Well, how did my friend? How is business? Ah, yes, sir. No. It's getting good, but that could be worse. <laughs> you know how it is. Always this time of the year, when it gets closed by Christmas, the men folks want to be good to their wives. So they buy them a lot of wash boilers and pots and pans, you know, <laughs> Christmas presents to make them happy. <laughs> Bend of the day young Hammond was buried. Been on it ever since. It must have been three or four weeks ago, ain't it? Oh, all of that, anyhow. Did you hear any news around about who shot Hammond, maybe? Well, the sheriff claims it was the drunken Indian was around here about that time. Ah, the sheriff. I'll bet if the sheriff says it was a drunken Indian that did it, because Stack told him to say that. Well, you couldn't get no bet on me on that question. You see, the sheriff, he wears the badge. Stack. He runs the county. Uh, you're telling me? Hello, Tom. Hello, my man. A drink, please. A little one. I don't want a big one. Just about that much to take off the chill. Uh, well, maybe just a drop more. Just a drop now. Not too much. I'll tell you when to stop. I take it for medicine only. Well, you ought to be a mighty well man. Oh, no, I'm sick. Hey, Dick, what's the matter with you? Are you sick? No, I ain't sick. I'm hungry, that's what I am. Be low down. I feel like shooting things. Moving things. That's what I feel like shooting. Something that's moving. Anything that's moving. There don't seem to be anything moving around here, Dick. Well, let's see if we can't make something move. Good night. Let me go. I start something moving. I'm Bailey and Steve. My bad. You know, my bad. How do you do, Dick? How are you? How's all your family? I ain't got any family. You know it. Sure, I know it. How could I make a mistake like that? I was thinking about another fella. Well, Merry Christmas. It ain't Christmas yet. You know it. Well, would I argue with you? Sure, I know it. What I mean to say is that when Christmas does come in a few days, I am wishing you a Merry. Oh, so that's what you mean, is it? Well, I, I, I could mean anything, Dick. I ain't stubborn about it. Well, do you want to fight? No. That's one thing I am stubborn about. Well, you got to do something. Now, could, could I sell you something? Maybe you could. What do you got? Well, could I interest you in some nice kitchen utensils? A nice washboard? <laughs> or a nice patent ringer? Some soothing syrup? Sheets? Pillowcases? Oh, listen. I got some pillowcases with colored pictures of the Statue of Liberty painted on them. Oh, how you could sleep with liberty underneath your head. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, jokers! <laughs> Never mind, my man. Or if I ever do get myself married, maybe you can come around then and sell me some of them things. Ah, uh, that's what you should be doing. Settle yourself down. Get married to a nice, quiet girl and have a nice home. Hi, Pan. That ain't a bad idea. Sure it ain't. It's a great idea. A little one for me, please. It's a bet. I'll do it. Well, who are you going to get married to, Dick? Well, I don't know. What's the difference? A woman. <laughs> That's also a good idea. <laughs> Any woman. I can see you getting married. You think I won't? Oh, have a drink. Sure. A drink and a wife. That's what I'm going to have. You think I'm fooling, don't you? But I ain't. You know what I'm going to do? No, neither do you. Any old time I don't. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to marry the first white woman I meet. What's your hurry? Shop around a little while. Look around. See what's going. <laughs> no, sir. Not me. When my mind's made up, it's made up. That's a great idea, Pie Pan. What do I owe you? Oh, I don't charge for advice. That's free. Granted, for nothing. No, sir. You've got to be paid. No, I don't. Can't sell me nothing, but 
maybe some of these other boys around here. Come on, boys, step up and buy something from Pie Pass. Anything you want, I'll pay for it. Well, I need to pay a dance. There you are, made a sale for you already. Yeah, but I ain't got anything. Don't lie to me, you got a pair on right now. I can see them. Yeah, but I couldn't show these. <laughs> you already sold them to this gent right here. Yeah, but why do I go home in? I don't care nothing about your private life, Pie Pan. What you go home in is none of my business. How much for them pants? No! Ten bucks I'll give you. Get them off and hand them over. No! Stop it! Get them off! Them. I'll catch a cold! What are you doing to me down there? Never my life! What are you doing there? Never my life! Hand! Nice men to take a man's pants off! What are you doing there? What are you doing there? you are, Nick. I'm gonna catch a cold. Not if you run, you won't. Back when I run without pants. I don't care where you run. Pick out your own direction. Open again, I see. I hope there'll be someone here to meet you, Mayor. Oh, I'll be all right. Thank you. All alert. All alert. Or I'll shoot plumb through the box. Dream about? You and me is gonna be married. You're drunk. Sure I'm drunk. I wouldn't be getting married, would if I wasn't. You can't frighten me. That's the problem. Never be frightened of the man you're gonna marry. You're crazy. No, I ain't. I just made a promise over in the saloon that I'd marry the first woman I met. And you're it. If I had a gun, you wouldn't insult me like this. The woman I marry can have anything I got. Now what are you going to do with it? If you don't let me alone, I'll, I'll shoot you. Well, you got to know how to use it first. Look, you point it at what you're going to hit. And then you just pull that little trigger there. Well, ain't you gonna shoot? Oh. Sorry it had to be done, ma'am. Ain't legal to marry a woman that you ain't kissed. Oh. There's another little technicality that has to be taken care of. What's your name? Any name will do for me. 
We've got a Marion sheriff over here. He'll be mighty glad to. You, you ain't Jimmy Hammond's sister, are you? I'm awfully sorry. You stop it. Honest, I didn't know that. Oh, I suppose if I hadn't have been Jimmy's sister, it would have been perfectly all right. Yes, ma'am. I mean, no, ma'am. Listen, Jimmy Hammond was the best friend I had, and I wouldn't have this happen for anything in the world. Isn't there something I can do? Yes, there is. You could go away and let me alone. But I can't let you alone. Somebody has to take care of you, and there's no place for you to go. If you just let me have my suitcase, I never want to speak to you again. Oh, I don't blame you, miss, but honestly. I... Hey, how about my pants? My pants! Taking a man's pants away from him. Well, wait a second, you think? It reminds me of the story of Joseph and his brethren. But there they took a coat, not pants. Listen, my man. Huh? What's the matter? That's Jimmy Hammond's sister, and what? she's here all alone. I can't do anything for her because I made a fool of myself. But I want you to look after her until I get sobered up. That's Jimmy Hammond's sister? Yeah. I'm sure. Can you imagine that, Jimmy Hammond's sister? And the fellow meets all the trains, takes people places. And this time I was a little bit late. Oh. You know the way to, to Hammond Ranch? Oh, yes, yes, sure I know. Could you take me there? Why, yes, miss, but there ain't anybody there just now. Oh, I know that. I'm Ruth Hammond. And since my brother died, well, it's my ranch. Oh, yes, miss. No, it ain't exactly the kind of place. Oh, but I won't be a bit frightened. Where is this cab of yours? Yeah? Oh, you mean my wagon? <laughs> oh, right there, miss. You just follow me and mind the knot holes in the walk because they're very tough on women's shoes and I don't sell any. <laughs> this way, please. Sobered up and stay sober for cheap. Well, that'll be a trick. <laughs> I think I got some tomatoes out back. I'll go look. <laughs> Put that stuff in the safe and lock the safe up. I'll take care of it. Don't worry. I'm worrying plenty. We'll get the thing all cleaned up and turn into money. This stuff as good as money, ain't it? Not for me, it ain't. Why not? I can spend money and nobody asks questions. I never thought of that. You better start thinking. <laughs> kind of cold tonight. I think I'll move you over and stand myself a hook or a hoot. I'll put that stuff away and don't let anybody get a look at it. I'll take care of it, Stack.
You use kind of a small bore gun, don't you? Maybe small, but I hit what I aim at. You don't always aim at tomato cans, do you? What do you mean by that? What do you think I mean? Are you looking for trouble? No. I don't figure you could be much trouble to me, Stack. Not unless you snuck up from behind like somebody done to Jimmy Hammond. Oh, I say... Yeah, yeah. You know. What's this? Oh, hello, Drip. You better keep this young rooster some manners. You're going to have a burying on your hands. Barons are getting real common around this town. It was Jimmy Hammond three weeks ago. Yeah. All right. Come on now. I'll try. Be no shooting around here while I'm sure. Don't go in that chair. Get when we'll fix them to have a good time. I should let that know they cowpunch or have it. Got some news for you, Stack. Jimmy Hammond's sister came in on number three tonight. I didn't know Jimmy Hammond had a sister. Yes. Pie Pan's driving her out in his wagon now. I've seen him as he went by. What kind of a looking quail is she? Not half bad. <laughs> Could you imagine what she looked like when I drop in and tell her the news? Did I saw such with the show? Did I see such? Never the show. See so. English is a very difficult language. You must be all worn out. Me? But why should I be worn out? You drove back and forth to town all night. You couldn't have had any sleep at all. Sleep? Oh, I had plenty. All the way to town and all the way back, just like a baby. <laughs> you can't sleep and drive. Sure not, but I don't have to. That old horse of mine knows more about where we're going than I do. All I have to do is point the thought sound, then I curl up on the seat and in two minutes, oh, you could hear me snort a half a mile away. <laughs> <laughs> Only one thing I had to break myself of. When I sleep on my left side, I got a habit of snoring like a fella saying, whoa. And I'd wake up and there we would be right where we started from. <laughs> <laughs> Cowboys I got for you, miss. Boys, come in. Come in, why don't you come into the house? <laughs> uh, they ain't much to look at, but you know how it is with cowboys. They get bow-legged and bent up, and their faces uh, ain't exactly the kind of faces you'd like to take pictures of if you're going anyplace. But what's the difference? What does a cow or a horse care for a face? <laughs> well, uh, you, you, you ain't nothing to sit up on a man, you know. Oh, I can't tell me you gentlemen are willing to work for me. Sure. Yeah, sure. Well, did he tell you that I have no money just now? Well, you see, miss, uh, we ain't none of us got no money now either. So that makes everything even. <laughs> but I never heard no uh, cowboys getting no wages until some stock or something was sold. And uh, then mostly they got whatever the boss figured he could afford to give them. And many times not even that. <laughs> well, I hate to ask you to do this, but... If it's really the custom of the country, why... Custom? Well, ma'am, that's the state law. Didn't you know that? Why, certainly. Well, then your men are hired. <coughs> and now that you're working for me, I'd like to know your name. Well, this one, this kind of long one here, by name, he's Griff Meeker. How do you do? Oh, oh pretty good, ma'am. Thank you. And this is Square Toe Boots. Where's your boots? Mm -hmm. Is that a name? I don't know. Anyhow, <laughs> that's what they call them, and they don't hide back. <laughs> How do you do? You do, Mom. And that's Slig Whalen. <laughs> Maybe that ain't a name neither, but uh, whatever it is, <laughs> that's... How do you do? Uh, howdy, miss. Well, there you are, miss. They're your boys. You hired them. <laughs> Didn't I tell you they were nice boys? <laughs> I have 
haven't met this gentleman yet. Uh, hmm? Oh, him? Haven't you met him yet? Well, well, as I'm living and breathing, <laughs> I must tell you about him. Uh, you know, he's kind of bashful, like very bashful. And he's got an experiment in his speech. He stummers. That's, that's Big Bailey. Mm. How do you do? Oh. I, I'm mighty sorry about last night, miss. I told you I never wanted to see you again. I know you did, but I heard you needed some help out here. And I, I don't need any help from you. Now, I wouldn't be too hard on him, miss. Uh, he means well. He means well. Do you know what he did last night? Well, I know he had a few drinks. Well, that's no excuse. Just after I got off of the train, he came to me on the platform and, well, he kissed me. Ain't you ashamed of yourself? Well, I no more than touched the tip of her ear. Will you get out of my house? Now, hold your horses just a minute, miss. Uh, you see, we four of us, we, we always stick together. Uh, ain't that right, boy? That's a fact, miss. Yeah, that's right, miss. Well, I won't have anyone working for me that even associated with it. All right, boy. Come uh, on, Just a go. minute, boy. Just a minute, Miss Hammond. You can't stay here alone. And if you looked all over the country, you couldn't get such wonderful boys. I suppose you're one of them. Who, me? One of them? I should kick a cow in the ribs for thirty dollars a month? No. Oh, I got a business. Well, you're a friend of his, aren't you? I am. And I'm very proud of it. Well, then. In all my life, I never had to work so hard to be nice to somebody. Come on, Pipe Pan. We've worn it around here. I'm beginning to believe it myself. Stuart Cole tonight wouldn't be surprised to blow up a storm. Who are you? My name's Zach. I knew your brother. Oh. Yes, indeed. You know him real well. Like you, too. Oh. Everybody likes him. I'm glad you're back. Too bad about him being shot to shame. You know about us when come out here? Yes. They wrote and told us. You get any letters from him? Any late ones, I mean. Yes, I had a letter from him just, just the day before it happened. Tell you how things were going here at the ranch? 
He wrote that he'd had rather a hard time paying the taxes, but that he'd managed at last and everything looked all right. Mm, wrote that, did he? Why do you ask these questions? Well, I guess maybe your brother was writing those things to sort of make you feel better. What do you mean? He never paid them taxes. How do you know? Because I paid them. You? Right after he died. You paid them for my brother? <laughs> no, indeedy, miss. But I ain't in the habit of playing Santa Claus. <laughs> I paid them for me. I don't understand. Well, I hate to tell you this, young lady, but right after your brother died, I bought this ranch for the back taxes. You bought it? That's it. Sir, you don't have any trouble proving it. If you want to go down to the sheriff's office, you can look up the records. I don't believe it. And the ranch isn't mine. No, miss. Of course, now you have the right and privilege to buy the place back. If you want to pay me what I give for it. How much was that? $1,876.10. But I haven't that much money now. Nowhere near that much. Well, that's just too bad. But that's the way the world goes. Oh, I can't believe it. I wanted to stay on here. Go on with what my brother started. Sure you did. Of course, now, I ain't going to be hard on you. I could put you right over the place. I'll leave as soon as I can. Oh, now, what the hurry? Besides, it's kind of homey-like having a woman around. We ain't going to be in each other's way. You going to live here? Why, sure. You going to stay here tonight? We certainly. Oh. Oh, now, don't feel that way about it. I ain't a fat fellow to get along with when you know me. <laughs> kind of skitty, ain't you? Well, I like them that way. I like them to shy and prance. Ain't heating you up, are we, Stack? Better not. Unless you're fixed to shoot three ways at once. Got me. What are you going to do about it? Don't aim to do nothing? Yes. I guess I don't have to tell you fellows of the law against trespassing on a man's property. That's right. You don't have to. I was willing to be reasonable with you. But now I'm warning you. Get off of my property. Get off and stay off. Good night, Stack. It's your pot, but don't start counting your winners. The game ain't over yet. Good night, Mr. Stack. Sweet dream. May your horse stick his foot in a gopher hole. Oh. Good night, ma'am. Oh, Mr. Bailey. I'm awfully glad you came back. We never went away. No more than enough to get out of sight and sneak back again. After the way I treated you? Shucks, ma'am. We didn't mind. Is it true, Mr. Bailey? Does that man Stack really own this ranch? Of course not. Why, well, say that fellow's the lioness man west of the Mississippi. <laughs> he just done that to scare you. You think so? Think so? I know so. Now, don't you worry, and I'll look after the legal end of it for you. Oh, would you? Say, uh, have you had your dinner? Oh, yes. I cooked it some time ago. You didn't eat it, did you? No, I... Oh, that's all right, then. It, it didn't taste very good. <laughs> yeah, we was keeping tabs on you through the window. Oh, then you... Saw... Yes, ma'am, we, we saw how things was going. Say, would you mind if I cooked you up a mess of stuff? Oh, thank you. <laughs> I never tried cooking before. 
I didn't know how hard it was. It's kind of like playing the fiddle. First time you try it, you're apt to make a mistake or two. I expect you think I'm awfully silly. No, ma'am. That ain't what I'm thinking about you. You said you was hungry. I was. A person gets that way after a while. Well, I guess I'll be drifting along now. You don't think that man Stack will come back to you? Stack? Say, you hear anybody prowling around this place, just let out a screech. Well, all of us come a-gunning. It's so good to have someone near I can trust. Well, I guess I'll be drifting along now. My, that was good. I'm real glad you liked it. You see, it's so strange for me here. So different from what I'm accustomed to back east that I... It'll uh, be all right when you get used to it. You know, I'll bet you get to like it. I wonder if I will. I kind of hope you will. Good night. My, isn't it nice out now? Sure is. Aren't the stars bright? Sure are. You see that big white one up there? Where? Look right along my arm where I'm pointing. Oh, yes, I see. No, you're looking wrong. Right over that peak there. Oh! That's Venus. Have you studied astronomy? Have I what, ma'am? Oh, I mean, uh, you've read a great deal about the stars? No, I've never done any book studying about them, but, you know, laying out nights on your saddle alone, nobody to talk to, nothing to do, you get to feeling kind of friendly with them. I can understand that. Just like there was people. People? Yeah, you, you get to knowing them that way. Uh, you see that kind of reddish one out there? Uh-huh. Well, I call him Kelly. Kelly? Yeah. On account of a puncher I knew once. Red Kelly, I called him. Well, he kind of had a reddish beard and a red face. And, you know, he was... He was sort of a ladies' man. How do you mean? Oh, he always kind of liked to be around women. You know. But what has that got to do with the stars? Well, there's Venus up there. And there's Red Kelly. In the winter, she wouldn't have nothing to do with Kelly. But in the springtime, he'd come a courting right up to her. Well, I guess I'll be drifting along now. I'm awfully glad you're here. Yes, and so am I. Good night, Dick. Good night. Did you hurt yourself? No, ma'am. Not a bit. Good night. Good night. some galvanized dish pans at 30 cents, three times four is 12, before the storm one is Where do you suppose he got the dough to pay the sheriff? I don't know that either. But one thing is certain. 
If it's worth dollars to him, it's worth that much to Miss Hammond. Fling. Isn't there a law in this state that a man can reclaim his property if he pays his taxes within a year? Yeah, providing he's got the money. <laughs> <laughs> That's smart. <laughs> what was that story you was telling us, Pie Pan? Hmm? You know, over at the bar o last summer. Story I was telling you? Yeah. I don't remember. There was a sheriff in it. And a, a fellow with bow and arrows. Uh-oh, he's off again. He's talking about Cupid. <laughs> Cupid. Cupid? He means Robin Hood. That's the critter. Robin Hood. Didn't he rob from the rich and give to the poor? Mm -hmm. Say, what are you driving at? Oh, that was one smart fella, that Robin Hood. <clears throat> Once upon a time, he was going into a little village that was living a very rich man. And he says to this rich man, I'm awfully sorry to wake you up, but I just found a family. A mother with six starving children has nothing to eat since last Tuesday. So I got to take away from you a few dollars. And he took away from him. That is the kind of fellow Robin Hood was. A taker. Nothing of the kind. Well, as a red heifer, I tell you, I can see as clean as I can see you. Don't talk so simple. That was a brindle bull. Tell you it was a red heifer. Say, you trying to make out I'm a liar? Well, I wasn't going to bring that subject up, but since you speak the word yourself, yeah, that's what you are. All right, you're a liar yourself, then. But yeah, don't you call me a liar while you slap sided bull legged little half a pint of nothing. Why, you walleye sway back to old rack of old aisles? <laughs> Hey, you hit me, you hit me, I tell you! Don't let me go now! Put that gun, you fucker. Holy smoke, Squirtle. Ball time. Property on H.W. Stack. Wherever would he be getting gold or something around this country? Where did he get it from? Somewhere off the Hammond Ranch, that's where. That's why he bought the place, eh? That's what he paid them back taxes with. What's it worth? A couple of thousand dollars. Just a little more than enough for what we need. But you can't pay the sheriff back. Why, he knew right Can't, huh? You think he wants anybody to know that he had it in here? Say, we'll give it right back to him for them taxes, and he won't open his mouth. I'm warning you now. All right then, Sheriff. But tell him not to go starting things. Any more trouble out of either one of you two galoots, and you'll go to the calaboose. <laughs> I, I never want to speak to you again, you ornery polecat. Well, that, that sure suits me. I'd have had him if that sheriff hadn't come yeah, along. Yeah, you, you mean he had you? on your chest. Just been made foreman out the Hammond ranch. Miss Hammond was telling me that there were some back taxes amounting to, uh... $1,876.10. That was paid by Mr. Stack. Yeah. After Jimmy Hammond died. According to the laws of this state, if Miss Hammond pays them taxes within a year, the property goes back to her. Right? Mm, yes. You weigh out the amount from this, and I think you'll find plenty and some to boot. Hey. Where'd you get this stuff? There's an old saying, Sheriff. Gold's where you find it. <laughs> 
Say, you, you. What? Oh, I understand. That fake fight up the street, then my safe open. Do tell. Didn't get nothing of value, did they, Sheriff? You know what they got. You stole... Careful, Sheriff. Nothing's been stolen. Getting it right back, ain't you? Yes, but that gold was stacks and... Oh, stacks gold, huh? Maybe you could tell us where he got it. If that moon wasn't so big, it'd look just like stacks. Ain't you clever. I could tell the law who got in my safe. You could, but you won't. You wouldn't want me going around telling people, would you? I'm warning you, young fella. Don't hunt in where you don't belong. I wonder if Jimmy Hammond got that much warning. What are you getting at? I'm getting at paying them back taxes and having you give me a receipt for the Hammond Ranch. How about it? Listen, fella. Fair is fair and fun fun. There wasn't no sense in you slapping me that hard. I didn't aim to hurt you, Slick, but I had to make it look real, didn't I? Come on, boys. Let's do any good for yourself, Dick? Perfect. That's pretty hot. I wonder what that 10 cents was for, Dick. Say, how long you been sitting here? I ain't got no watch. Did you see anybody go in that office of mine while I was out? Well, now you know how it is with me, Sheriff. My eyesight isn't any too good. You can see across the street, can't you? How far is it across the street? About 75 feet. Well, my limit's about 60 feet. Morning, Drip. Hey. What's ailing you? Bloody. Come on in here. Grabbing stack. Everybody'd find out about this dust and they'd want to know where it came from. We'll put that dust where it can't be found. You give it out, the office has been robbed. Robbed of what? Anything you say, that's up to you. The office has been robbed. Dick Bailey and Square Toad Boots done it. You get yourself together a posit we can trust, and we'll go out there and get them. If they happen to get killed with this and the rest. I don't like the looks of this. Thing. What do you mean? Well, the state will get me from my own of office. There's been talk of removing me, and it kind of gives me the shivers. Mm -hmm. You've gone too far to back out now, Drip. Just what kind of shivers would a wholesale hanging give you? You doing a jig step with about six foot of thin air under your feet. I'm the old prairie. On the old prairie. On the old prairie. Hi, Sam. Huh? Do you mean to tell me they don't celebrate Christmas out here at all? By this country, they don't. Christmas, Tuesday, Thursday, any day. Every day is the same. <laughs> Nobody pays any attention. I'm certainly sorry they don't celebrate Christmas out here. It would be better for my business. But there's no Christmas tree. And do you know why? <clears throat> Once upon a time, there was a dinner tourist. And this dinner tourist was spitting fire through his nostrils, and he burned up all the Christmas trees. So now there's no Christmas tree here. So no Christmas. What's that? It's nothing. Mice. Well, don't go. Let's finish the dishes. Merry Christmas. Oh, Merry Christmas. I'm supposed to be Santa Claus. <laughs> oh. 
Do you like it? Do I like it? Oh, it's beautiful. You old frog. Oh, no. Can you think of any more reasons why they don't have Christmas trees out here? <laughs> I hope you wouldn't think I'm a liar. <laughs> I'll go get the boys. We didn't hardly know what to get you. It doesn't make a particle of difference what you got. It's just that you remembered. It's a phonograph. A phonograph? Yeah, it plays real nice. Let me wind it up here. Put this thing over here like this. Listen. And, and there's something else on the tree. from you? <laughs> Not much. What did you say before I came west? Never mind what I said. I'm here. And, and the ring's here. And there's nothing else to do but... Just that sure of yourself as ever, aren't you? You bet. Oh, this. I want you to meet Mr. Dressler. Bob, this is Mr. Bailey. Mr. Bailey? How do you do? Bob's from my hometown back east. Oh, is he? Yeah, I used to carry your books home from school. <laughs> did you? She's just the same now as she was then. Stubborn. Bob tried to argue me out of coming west. Did he? Did I? <laughs> I went about as far as I could go. How is everybody? Oh, fine. All the old crowd wanted to be remembered to you. And what do you think? Ella Higgins teaching English in high school now. <laughs> no, honest. Oh, don't go, Dick. Well, Squirtle said some of the uh, work stock needed feeding, so I'd better go down and... Hey, what kind of looking guy is this fella? <laughs> you should look like that. A fella that's all slicked and shined up, like the kind of a kitchen stove you give to a bride. <laughs> What's he doing here? I don't know. But uh, the fella that brought him said he's an old friend of Miss Hammond's from the east. Did you show her the things, Dick? Yeah, yeah what's she the surprise? Yeah, she liked them real well, too. Mm -hmm. Say, boys, I would just think it'd be a good idea if we all drifted down to the border. What do you say? <laughs> You was just thinking. Well, I know lots of things, and one thing is that you ain't going anyplace. How do you know? Because I know you, and you ain't a quitter. Well, I ain't in the habit of sticking around where I ain't wanted. Well, who says you ain't wanted? Well, I got eyes, ain't I? Dick, there's an old saying which says that you should never believe anything you hear and only half of what you see. And so far, you've only seen the half that you shouldn't believe in. Well, I... Did I ever tell you the story of Lachenbrock? No. no matter what kind of looks you give me, you're going to hear it just the same. This fellow Lachenbrock, he was a Westerner, too. Uh, you know how I know? It says in the book he came out of the West. <laughs> Once upon a time, this Lachenbrock, he was even worse off than you. But did he give up? Never. He got on his horse and he said, What's he get up there? And he rode 16,000 miles to see the princess. And did he catch her? Oh, did he catch her? You betcha he catched her. That's the story of Lahuma.
smart the way they handle those horses. It certainly is. I'll get down and see how many they got. Oh, that's great work, Square <laughs> Uh-oh. Here comes the Duke of Duhakis. Oh, Betty's a nice boy. Well, I don't like him. Oh, I, I don't like him either, but there's lots of nice people I don't like. Hiya. He wears the necktie. So well, <laughs> he wears the necktie. Ah. Pretty good bunch, huh, Grip? Yeah, well, deep bad. Nice work, fellas. You please? Very much. Well, that's fine. How many did you get? Oh, about a hundred head. Oh, you don't know exactly how many? No. Not exactly. Well, I'll count them later. Oh, uh, I want to thank you and all the boys on behalf of Miss Hammond for all you've done for her. You know, I'll be around here for a while, so of course I'll take charge. Lachen war. <laughs> He's going to count the horses. <laughs> You're going to do what? I'm going to take charge of things while I'm here. Did Miss Hammond tell you to take charge? Well, it isn't necessary. You see, we're old friends and we understand each other. You mean you're going to be the foreman? If that's what you call it. Yeah, that's what we call it. Well, then I'm foreman. Hmm, that kind of mixes things up. How so? Because I'm the foreman. Not anymore. <laughs> I'm hysterical. Don't you know that a foreman around here must be able to lick everybody on the place? Oh, is that so? Yeah, that's so. All right, then. I'm the foreman. That's easy to say. I guess we might as well settle this right now. Now, wait a minute, boys. You've got a very good idea, and I wouldn't stop it for anything. But you know how it is with women. If Miss Hammond should see you fighting... Now, listen, Partan, you start yeah, And this. don't stop for me. Look, you go ahead and hammer his ears under his armpits. I'll run down to the house and do something so Miss Hammond don't see you do it. See? That's right. Let's get away from the house. Come on, fella. Come this won't be good. Yeah. Let's go see the Duke get crowned. Oh, oh Miss Hammond. <laughs> Ever since it's come, I've been wanting to hear that talking machine. Could you play me something? Why, yes. Haven't you heard it yet? Yes, I heard it, but not good. <laughs> Have you got a, a loud racket, you know, a big band or something like that? I think so. That's good. Well, play it, play it quick. I like good music. Oh, that's beautiful. He don't know it, but he's sticking his head smack dab in a book of the pink poison. Hey, ain't that pop jelly coming yonder? It sure is. Well, and he's riding like ready? a trouble. Wait. Wait, wait a minute, Phil. Wait a minute. Let's not get a good fight started and have it interrupted. Wait a minute. They're coming, boys. Who's coming? Why, Stack and his gang. The sheriff's leading them. They let somebody gang your killers they're out to get you, boys. The sheriff's been telling you around town that you robbed his safe stick and he's out to get you. What of it? They can't prove nothing. They're not coming to prove. They're coming to shoot. Break for the house, boys. Hurry up. Hurry up, boys. Come on, get along.
I missed him. Keep popping on them, boys. They'll be running out of juice pretty soon. You watch the window. All right. Listen, boy. Stack's rounding the house. That means we're licked unless I can get the drop on him. How are you going to do that? I'm going to make a break for the corral. That's suicide, Dick. Why, it's sure. the only chance we've got, and I'm going to take it. You keep me busy, and I'll make a run for it. Well, let's go for it. Dick! Don't go out there, please. I've got to, miss. But you must... Something might happen to you. Something has. your hand off that trigger and back out. Well, it looks like you win another pot, Bailey. I'm counting my winnings this time, Stack, because the game's over. Drop that gun. Call off that man. Well, man, that's a party operating under the sheriff's orders. And that's just too bad for you. Because if you can't stop that shooting, then do it pronto. If I do, what happens to me? We'll talk about that later. If you don't... Okay. Hey, you stubborn! Can you hear me? Yeah. Calm it off. Round up your men and hit for town. What's wrong? You heard me, didn't you? By and by, get the men together now and head out of here. You're the doctor. Hey, boys, turn it on. Call the boys in. Bring your horses and hit you back for town. Come on, fellas. Hey, what's the idea of him sending us back? All I know is that they go back to town. Okay. So far. Get in front of this gun and keep moving. Wait a minute. 
Right in there. Now what? Who killed Jimmy Hammond? Why ask me? I've got a bullet in the chamber of this gun that I made out of two small bore bullets. Yeah? One was the slug that killed Jimmy Hammond. The other went through that can of tomatoes. Jimmy Hammond was shot in the back. Turn around. Have we got any way out? You might look for one. You want to know who killed young Hammond? I did. I know you did. Why? Found a pocket of placer gold on his ranch here. Back there in White Horse Canyon, where if he comes over the falls. Go on. Well, he panned out some 2,000 dust to pay his back taxes on the place here. Then what? He met me. Stack? I don't know whether I'm going to be able to keep my finger eased off this trigger or not. Now, oh, wait a minute. What do you want me to write? The whole work. I wonder where he went. You think they got him? Yourself. I'm gonna get out of here. I'm gonna beat it away from this place. Why should I go back? I'm never going back. Yep, square toe. We better saddle up. We'll pull our freight out of here. What's the use of sticking around? We'll mosey on down by the Rio Grande. No, Dick. Please don't go. Now or ever. 
but I thought you and... Yeah, I thought so, too. Well, Merry Christmas. Oh, ain't that beautiful? That reminds me of the story of Snow White and the Prince. <clears throat> Once upon a time, there was a little girl called Snow White. She lived in the mountains. And there was a prince looking all over the country for her to find himself a young wife. And he came across Snow White in the forest and said, Oh, mine, Snow White. And she said, Oh, mine, prince. And they was married right away, and they was living happy ever afterwards. <laughs>